Hey, April, how are you doing? Hey, pretty good, Shane. How about you? Doing okay. Um, it's a little late on the East Coast here for me, uh, getting towards the end of my day. I know that you're right there in the middle of the country and uh, probably wrapping up after dinner. So I, I see the title here. You're going to custom integrate and extend our apps with, with functions and power apps. So I'm going to let you kick us off here and I'm going to sit back and kind of watch the questions come through and, and see how you're, how you're going. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I have a really long title, I realized, for this. So <laughs> customize, integrate, and extend applications with open API, Azure Functions, and Power Apps. I don't think I can have made it any longer. Um, but really what I want to talk about is how we can take the APIs and the Azure Functions that you're already using and unlock even more possibility by integrating that with the Power Platform. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and to really to level set here, I want to talk about the kind of current landscape we have for application development. We have a couple unique challenges and then also opportunities from those challenges. So one of the things we're seeing now is just an overwhelming demand for new application development that we have here. So about estimates are, you probably maybe heard these metrics in a few sessions and stuff that you watched here, but about 500 million new applications are going to be built in the next five years, which is actually about more than all the apps built in the last 40 years. So just an astronomical demand that we have here for new applications that need to be built, which is about five times faster than what current can, well, sorry, than what currently can be delivered uh, by IT departments here. So couple that with the fact though that we have about 80% of organizations that are saying they're struggling to find technical talent to build these applications. So we have all these apps that need to be built and just not enough people in time to, to build them. So it's really unique times that we're in right now. Um, so what are some of the things that we can do? What's the opportunity though that can arise from the, the challenges and the what we're facing here with the app development need? Well, that's where low code technology can really help us bridge that gap. So one of the things we're estimating is about 65% of enterprise application development will be in the low code space by 2024, which is just three years from now. So it's something that has already taken off quite a bit, low code technology, and it's just going to keep being used really exponentially over the past uh, next few years here to help bridge the need for the application development. And when we talk about low-code tools, of course, when we're talking with Microsoft products, we're talking about the Power Platform. That is our low-code suite of technology that spans across Microsoft 365, Azure, and all of that. And just to level set, what exactly is the Power Platform and what low-code tools does it offer? We have four main things that we can use that kind of vary in the scope of really creating holistic business applications here. So we have... Power BI, which probably a lot of us has heard of, really commonly used um, enterprise orgs, the oldest one of the Power Platform for creating dashboards and reporting. We have Power Automate, which really is almost like the glue. That is our workflow automation tool for the Power Platform. It can be used across all of the tools, across SharePoint and Dynamics and Azure to automate almost anything that you can think of. And uh, some of the new technology that we're using and integrating with Power Automate also allows us to do robotic process automation with Power Automate Desktop, which you might have heard, I think it was announced at Build or maybe Ignite that that is included in uh, Windows now for you. Uh, then we have Power Virtual Agents. That is a tool that lets us create low-code chatbots within the Power Platform. And that's the newest uh, tool there in the Power Platform tool set. And then what we're really going to be focusing on today is Power Apps. That is the lightweight, rapid application development tool for the Power Platform that lets us build applications without having to know traditional programming languages. One of the cool things, though, that we're talking about here at the Power Platform is it really spans, you know, why we call it a low-code platform. It spans across everything. It can truly be a no-code experience with kind of some of the drag and drop experience, but it can be low-code by using Excel-like formulas, which we'll talk a little bit more about here in a second. But why we're here today is it can be code first developed too. We have professional development and extensibility across this so that we can integrate our pro dev tool sets and skills into the Power Platform to extend it and just make it even more powerful. Um, and if we look here, you know, so those are the general tools of the Power Platform that we can utilize, but it all shares a few things in common. So one is Dataverse. That is the Power Platform's kind of 
database and data model that it uses to store the data. Now we can use this as a data source, um, but it's what it all runs off of is Dataverse. And then we have AI builders. So this is a low code way of adding in AI into your applications. We have some pre-built models that you can utilize to do things like object detection and form processing and prediction and category classification. And then what we're going to be focusing on today, you'll see the one thing, the last thing that they all share is data connectors. These are those building blocks that allow us to connect services into the Power Platform. And we'll talk way more about that here in a second. Now, we talked about this huge need for application development and low code technology can really help us bridge that and the Power Platform specifically can help us. You know, so in really in essence, what the Power Platform does is make low code transformation a team sport because it can handle the no code, low code and code first scenarios. So when we talk about the concept of making low code development a team sport, um, that's really something I wanna dive deeper on and that has a name and we call that fusion development. So what fusion development is, is it's really just the idea of how low code devs, IT pros and pro devs can work together to really solve a business problem and create software faster. So it really allows everyone, as you're seeing here in this awesome visual that uh, Nitya created, you can allow everyone in the team to contribute in their own comfort zone. So why a citizen dev who might not have traditional programming language background skills, they can identify a business problem and they can bring that to a fusion team to help solve it. So with the fusion team containing IT pros and pro devs, the IT pros and pro devs can kind of identify the admin and the data needs and security layer and all of that. Um, while the citizen devs can more focus on the business requirements and building the app and the user experience with Power Apps since it's a drag and drop uh, easy to use interface that it offers. So, and just like any dev team with a fusion dev team, you can have regular check-ins and identify blockers and evaluate progress. So it's really works like a traditional dev team, except you're able to bring in people that wouldn't be in a traditional dev team, uh, like the fusion, like the uh, citizen developers to be able to help augment the process. So why, why would you want to do this, right? Um, fusion development, has so many great benefits. And um, this is something that we're seeing that's really is rising. About 84% of companies right now already have fusion teams. So this concept is not new. And there's a reason why so many companies have fusion development teams. I mean, obviously the biggest one, it just helps you build apps faster and solve business problems faster. So you can, being able to take the business users who are closest and the most knowledgeable about the business needs and the processes and giving them the ability to express those needs instantly in passing power apps to create an application is huge. It exponentially increases how fast you can build applications. And meanwhile, that's freeing up professional developers to be able to come in and leverage their skills best to fill in any gaps in the more complex or advanced requirements that you have in the process. So this saves obviously a ton of time, it allows the app building process to be really iterative. So, you know, more than really maybe any other agile processes almost uh, with, you know, the possibility of several iterations a day in the process here. Um, so that's really the benefit and why you should be thinking about embracing this fusion development model. And with low code, you know, as I've kind of, I feel like I'm beating the horse here, but I mean, it's really extends your development potential. Um, the average cost, what we kind of estimate to develop an app is about 70% less if you use that, say with Power Apps and the Power Platform than with traditional coding methods. So there's so much potential and so many projects that might have been, you know, kind of constrained by limited developer resources that we can tackle and transform by embracing fusion development teams and leveraging the Power Platform. So kind of how this works in action here, we saw like how the process works, but we can have a citizen developer building a front end in Power Apps, how they want it, how they want to be able to interact with the application that they need to be built. They can send that off to a pro dev. They can talk back and forth. The pro dev can add custom functionality, whether it's integrating with uh, external services or internal services via APIs, whether it's maybe adding in additional functionality that the app doesn't need or that doesn't have and it needs like uh, custom controls and things like that. And then the end user obviously 
which oftentimes is the citizen dev itself is also the end user, they can be involved in that feedback loop. And it's just a really collaborative process to make application development faster. So we've kind of level set here and we've talked about what low code is, why it's important, why fusion development teams are important. Now let's dive a little bit deeper on the Power Platform itself, and particularly Power Apps, and see what that looks like from an application development side of things. So with Power Apps, it's really a natural integration point for Fusion Dev Teams, because that's what enables you to build web and mobile applications quickly. One of the things I love about Power Apps, you know, being a traditional developer myself, is it was always a pain having to accommodate for all the different areas where you might use the app, whether it's the web or the mobile, and iOS, Android. With Power Apps, you build the application once and it works across all of those platforms. You don't have to worry about tailoring it to those different platforms. And it works seamlessly in Microsoft 365 and Dynamics. Um, and one of the other great things is because it is within Microsoft 365, we can easily add in guardrails and have enterprise grade governance and security for the apps we built. We don't really have to worry so much about building that in. That's just baked into the product. And then the big one, which is what we're talking about today, is the ability to easily connect to your data. This is one of the main reasons why building in Power Apps is so fast and so efficient. We have over 500 pre-built connectors, which I'll explain a little bit more what connectors are here in a second, that allow us to connect to a variety of services easily um, and securely. And then the AI that we were talking about with AI Builder, being able to add that intelligence easily into your app to do things like barcode scanning, object recognition, mixed reality, those just went generally available in Power Apps as well. So we can do things in augmented and mixed reality. And then, of course, the pro development side of things, being able to have really what we call that no cliffs experience of being able to do something drag and drop or adding in your pro dev tools.